Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books, Etiquette the Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you would like to purchase my books, you can do so directly now on my website. I'll link it here as well in the description box below. If you are new on my channel, here I talk about soft skills, etiquette, self-development, sometimes beauty and wardrobe. So if you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back to my channel. I am delighted to see you here. If you are someone who is really interested in learning more in depth about etiquette, you can join my Patreon etiquette movie and book club that is also in the description box below where I do monthly review of different movies from an etiquette standpoint of view. So I've done over 20 different movie analysis so far. By joining it right now, you'll be able to view all of them. And also, if you want to excel your table manners, you can purchase my online course that's also available on my website with subtitles in English, Spanish and Arabic and covers everything that you need about Western formal dining etiquette. So today's video is something that was highly requested for me to do. I get a lot of messages on my Instagram over DM, over emails and just generally in private consultations as well, how to become a better learner of languages and how to improve and keep on going and how to get inspired. So I decided to do an updated version of this learning language video. I have done actually one of the very first videos on my YouTube channel was about learning languages and me being a polyglot and fluent in um, different languages. You can watch the video to see how many. Uh, if you haven't still checked it out, it's available in the playlist called self-development. Uh, so you can see it there. It's one of the oldest versions, uh, oldest videos that I've done. And I decided to shoot a new video incorporating actually uh, new tips. And also I'll be featuring my kids in this video. Um, I really shy away from showing them often on social media, but they will be in this video. So make sure to watch this video until the very end. And my daughter is only eight years old and my son just turned five and they are speaking, both of them are speaking four languages, of course, at different level, but uh, they understand and can speak them. Uh, and this is something that I think shows that I'm not just speaking from my own experience as a person who is probably inclined to learn languages. Um, so maybe some of you have argued that you know some people are just better off learning languages than others okay if that argument is accepted by me personally but i'm also raising two kids that are already polyglots at such a young age so i think i speak from an experience of a mother who's raising polyglots so first things first i think the most important thing when it comes to learning language is starting with a language that you are most inclined or most interested in say it's your favorite language you like watching movies in this language or you like say music in this language you like something about this culture or this something related to that language so if this is not a must for example if you're applying to go to work in some country and you have to speak their language then it's a different case it's something that you have to do but if you were to just enhance your language skills and add another language to your to your CV say or to your knowledge I would say start with a language that you are most likely inclined or interested in already this makes the whole learning process so much easier uh, even just to give an example of you know when I was starting to learn languages um, English was something that I was already interested in because we loved watching uh, cartoons that were actually originally made in English so that was something that got us into learning the language also so I remember then when we started learning with my brother languages, we started with French and Spanish. That's something we ourselves really loved, like the languages. Uh, but uh, it was something that we already shared interest in or showed interest in. So our parents started with that, those languages. And only after a while we started adding languages that we weren't so interested in, uh, but we had to learn them uh, because it was good uh, to just add more languages to our learning experience. But I think as I have adapted the same uh, method to my own children, uh, I started with uh, incorporate adding one language at a time. And we started now with first Azerbaijani, that's our native language, followed by Russian, because that's a commonly spoken language here in Azerbaijan. Then I added English as something they would do as a play date. And then um, I immersed them into French school. So hence they started learning French as well. So 
I took it slow, but I ensured that they were also inclined or interested in learning that language. And so if you're an adult or if you're a parent who wants to add another language to your child's vocabulary, pay attention to what they're watching. Maybe they love watching, say, Japanese cartoons, or maybe they like eating Chinese food, or maybe they like uh, listening to Italian music. So you should pay attention to what they initially like and then add that language and bring it to their bring it into their exposure so they get to listen to that uh, language often so they can become more exposed to that language it's natural that when we love something uh, there is this inner feeling of wanting to learn more so that keeps us the force the propelling force how i call it uh, it really keeps you going and even at the times when you feel like you don't want to learn the language just because you're so much into the culture you're so much into the food or the art or whatever it is you are most likely to keep on going when you love it. The second most important tip when it comes to learning a language is finding your medium of learning. This is not just about languages, it's about everything that you want to learn in life. Find something through which or medium through which you're best or most likely to learn fast. So say you're a visual learner, you want to see things when you learn things. So maybe the best thing for you is to read books in that language or to be exposed to something visually. Maybe it's a video that teaches the language. Maybe it's you know some imagery that teaches the language. Maybe it's a TV series that you watch that is you know spoken in that language. Or maybe you're an audio listener or an audio learner. You better learn when you hear something. So maybe you'll listen to more podcasts, You'll have a TV series running, you know, on your TV while you're doing something around the house. Um, maybe you just speak to someone in that language and therefore you learn better. Usually as kids, we're better learning when, uh, through um, uh, audio uh, methods. So most of us are exposed to language by just listening to it. So say, you know, as a growing up and say in a neighborhood, people speak a certain language, you're most likely to acquire it by being just exposed and listening to that language. So if this is a smaller child, I would suggest that you focus more on just exposing them to the, a lot of audio in that language. Language. They're most likely to going to incorporate it very fast, much faster than we learn as adults. So finding your medium of, of learning is very important, not just for languages, but just for anything in life. And then use that medium and ensure that you're exposed to it as much as possible. The third tip when it comes to people saying, you know, oh, you have the means to afford to take classes or you have the means to, to, know, to have to hire tutors to learn, you're just, you know, blessed or everything, you know, around that sort, all kinds of excuses as to why someone is better off learning languages than the others. Maybe that was the case about 20 years ago where you had to actually purchase some DVDs, you had to actually hire a tutor to learn a particular language, but it's no longer it can be a valid argument or excuse when we have so many online resources. This brings me to the third tip, which is make use of the free online resources that you have at hand. You know, YouTube is full of language videos. Um, podcasts are free to listen to. Um, there are just so many TV things that you can just watch online that are for free. There's so many PDF format, learning languages, you know, books, vocabulary, exercises that you can do online, a lot of vocabulary tests, really just you name it. Any language that you want to learn, there are so many free online resources available at hand. So don't make up excuses and don't, uh, you know, believe in the, your own excuses. Just make use of the most amount of online free resources that you have at hand. The fourth important tip when it comes to learning anything, be it a language, be it working out, be it really anything in life, Consistency matters so much more than intensity and this is particularly true for a language because I'll tell you in the tip 5 why I think that's the case but just to keep it brief in this point is that instead of say allocating you know two hours in a week to learn a language make it 30 minutes every day 20 minutes every day accumulatively that is going to be more than just two hours twice a week but also you're not going to feel the burnout you're not going to feel like dreading the moment of sitting down and learning the language you're not going to be overwhelmed or bored or exhausted from the learning process keep it short keep it brief and sweet but make sure that you are consistently day in and day out exposed to that language the more you're exposed to it the more likely you're going to pick up words and build up your vocabulary 
this kind of learning actually happens almost subconsciously. It's not something you put an effort and you're conscious about it. It's something that happens and your brain picks up things along the way. So if you are going, if you don't aim, of course, to ace an exam in a month because you have to pass a certain level of a language, you know, skill. If this is not something that you're preparing for an exam or for, for university that you have to pass, then if it's something that you're doing for your own sake, for your own good, then you can make it an enjoyable process and keep in mind that consistency in a longer run is going to give you better results than if you do it intensively but for a shorter amount of time. And with the language process, that brings me to the next point, which is learning a language is a process it's not there is no end result so it's not a marathon it's not something that you know you have reached a point and you're done uh, even you're in your own native language when you speak it you're constantly learning it throughout your whole life adding new words expanding it also every language has new words in its vocabulary you know new things appear in our life and we have new words to explain them so language is constantly evolving and it cannot have an end result again as i said earlier of course if you are passing say a german proficiency test and you have to be at a certain c2 level then of course there are certain standards of how many words you have to have in your vocabulary what grammar you have to be able to ace in order to achieve that result but if the learning language is just a process for your own good for your own sake for just the lifestyle choice then you really don't have to look at it as an end result you have to enjoy the process and understand that it's an ongoing thing if you stop speaking the language if you stop being immersed in language or talk the language or uh, you know read it in that language sooner or later you're going to forgive forget it even if it's your native language if you stop using it you'll stop learning it and you'll stop and you'll start actually forgetting it so my advice is to look at the process as as an ongoing thing rather than a, a process that has an end result the reason i urge you to look at the language learning journey as a process is because the most important thing when it comes to learning a language but also really anything in life is being patient and especially with languages it's such a slow process until you start seeing a result but once you have that result you're going to feel very comfortable and from their point on it's just going to be a unconscious thing that you're doing um, i remember even when i was learning french and spanish at some point it the both language were so stalled at the level that I was and I felt like I'm not moving anywhere why is it I'm like being exposed to this language every single day but it feels like nothing is happening I'm not progressing and then I guess it's just the way that our minds work it picked up all these words along the way and it wasn't giving them out you know I wouldn't be able to pronounce those words they wouldn't come to my mind when I was talking but all of a sudden a couple of months passed and after all that was processed by my brain or memory I started just unconsciously bringing them up in my everyday speech so with languages when you are building up a certain vocabulary level be patient it's going to take some time until you're able to show results um, I think it could be a similarity could be drawn with workouts you know you start going to the gym you work out you don't see immediate results and you're working out really with a lot of effort but it really starts showing off, say, at three months time. And let's say you take a break from gym and you start seeing results. This is almost the same with languages. You might start learning a language for three, four months. You're not being, to, you're not being able to say anything. And then all of a sudden, one day you wake up and you're able to have a conversation. I'm saying this not just as someone who, you know, remembers herself as a child, but even now as a parent. I'm being very patient with my children learning languages and I also I'm telling them to be patient as well not to focus on you know why is that I'm not able to say something I'm just saying just have this classes you know it's okay even if you're not being able to talk it's all right just listen to it and so I see that when my daughter started her French school her French nursery she'd never heard that language before and for six months up until January she wasn't able to utter a word she didn't understand anything and she wasn't able to respond anything she thought that she wasn't able to understand but really every single day that she was exposed to a French language and everything was in French her brain was picking it up 
And I remember it was January, it was winter time, closer to her birthday, that all of a sudden she started speaking French. And from there onwards, it was just an ongoing thing for her. And we never stopped uh, learning or speaking the language. The same was with English. It took her a while. And even in the beginning, she was really shy of talking English with me because I was fluent in her mind, in her opinion, and she wasn't comfortable speaking the language with me. But once she overcame that level, when she started having a conversation, she nowadays feels very comfortable speaking English with me. So on the example of my own children as well, on my own personal example, I urge you to be very patient in the process and really try to make the best and most of enjoying the process so that you have enough patience to endure. With that being said, if you really need a break from learning the language, take that break, but please don't turn that break into a complete stop. I have seen this many, many times when people start learning the language in a year time, you know, they start having a bit of a conversation, then they're like, I need to take a break. I'm so tired of learning the language. And that break turns into an eternal stop. If you already started picking up a language, do not stop. Try not to concentrate on end result and give yourself that break that you need. Maybe it's a month, maybe it's two, but make sure that you go back to the learning process. And the final tip when it comes to learning a language is speaking it, practice speaking it. This is the most cliche tip you're ever going to hear, but it is the most useful one that you'll ever need to know is that if you do not practice speaking, you're never going to be able to speak that language. Um, it's like, say, you're watching a, a dance routine on YouTube. You just watch the whole dance. You think how beautiful it is. I could do this. I could do that. But you actually never stand up and never dance it. You're never going to be a dancer unless you stand up and move. The same is with language. You're never going to be a speaker unless you actually speak it. You practice it. I know a lot of people have this fear of, you know, not speaking correctly, of being mocked, of being laughed then find someone who is pretty much on your level of that language so you don't feel shy speaking the language. Uh, the best way, of course, to practice speaking is to speak it with a native person. But if that native person is someone that can make fun of you, is not really open to you know, teaching you the language or, or being fine with your mistakes, uh, then find someone who is on your same level or maybe a level up. So then you can actually start practicing and having this conversation. I remember that you know I had this same issue with when I had to do my master's in Belgium, I had to do it in French and English. And I remember how shy I felt about speaking French to French people, but felt fine speaking French to Germans and Spanish and Italians in school. Um, because for them as well, this was a foreign language. So we all felt very comfortable speaking it together. And as soon as someone French walked in, where all of a sudden didn't feel comfortable. So again, this is something everyone experiences. I was one of these people that was also shy to speak a certain language with the natives. But over time, once I started building up the confidence, I started speaking it better and better. I felt comfortable speaking it with native people, knowing that um, I am confident enough or comfortable enough for me not to be laughed at or mocked at. So this is something I urge you to do. And if you, for example, are looking for someone to speak it with and you don't have anyone in your vicinity, then you can, of course, check out always online resources. Again, there are a lot of websites, a lot of places where you can make new friends. You can, you know, ask someone to tutor you in that language and you on, in return will tutor them in your native language. So exchange sort of your services or your skills with someone who's open to learning. Thank you so much for having the patience to watch this video until this very moment and as a bonus to this video I want to share a little short clip speaking languages with my two kids my daughter who's eight my son who just turned five um, don't be a very harsh judge but they are just learning these languages uh, pretty much simultaneously now and the way that I am bringing these languages into their life is making sure that they are constantly exposed to these languages and they're constantly speaking those languages to me and we do it interchangeably we switch from lang language to another making sure that they are comfortably switching from one to another if you have any questions about languages you can ask me here under this video and I'm always very interested in learning about your tips on how to learn more languages so let's take a short Look at this clip. Sen için Azerbaycanlısın ve buna göre de sen Azerbaycan dilini mütləq danışmalısın. Sen Azerbaycan dilinde bir iki cümlede neyse bize danışabilirsen özün hakkında. Benim adım Sevinçti. Benim de 8 yaşı var. Bir de kardeşim var. 
Onun adı Cemil'dir və beş yaşı var. Mən Bakıda yaşayıram. Sən hansı məhdəbdə oxuyursan? Fransuz dil. Fransuz məhdəbdir. Və sən orada Azərbaycanını keçirsən? Bəli. Və sən Azərbaycanını başqa harada örgəndin? Nənə danışanda mən ona qulaq hazırdım və ondan götürürdüm sözləri. Hə, sözləri ondan örgəndin. Bəs Azərbaycan ilə başqa hansı dərslər keçirsiniz məktəbdə? İngiliz. İngiliz dili keçirsiniz. Rus dili keçirsiniz məktəbdə? Yox. Anca fransız dili. Gəl, yaxşı, növbəti dildə hansı dildə danışarsanız? Rus dilində yaxşı. Tipi sən ki, skaja mənə şətəni bəyət əsibə nə ruskum? Mənə əsibəliyət, mənə zəvqtə sevinç. Mənə səmək ləbimə prədinə şəkələ, ətə art. A, bəşəm sənə rəvətə art? A, bəşəm mənə tam interesnə vəşəyə. Interesnə vəşəyə rəsuyəm, pətəm... Потом делаем подделки разные, на Новый год мы разные елочки, маленькие из бумажек делаем, или флакончики с водой. Окей, because most of my audience speaks English, can you also say something in English? So you're telling me that your favorite subject in school is art. What else do you like to do? Maybe in school or maybe outside of school? What are your favorite things? Outside of school, I don't like to do. Horseback riding mm -hmm. because I love horse. Okay, you yes. love horses. Uh -huh. And and inside of school, I I don't like grammar and math. Okay, but is there anything you like in school? Yeah, there is. What is? Like when we're doing like poems. Oh, you love poems. Okay, so you love learning by heart poems. You also love art. What else do you love? Like I love poems because. That we we need to do, uh, we need to draw something with a poem. Like we're saying something, a poem like from, from like somewhere or mm. in a school. We mm. need to draw a school, our friends, how we're playing with our friends. Okay, so whatever the poem is about, you have to make a drawing to show yeah. that poem. Okay, so that's because you also love uh, painting and drawing. Do you like doing sports in school? Sure. Yeah? Which one do you like? What like, do you do? Um, oh, you're doing dancing? Yeah. Okay, so do you like dancing more? Do you like horseback riding more? Horseback riding. Really? Yeah. But what other sports do you do apart from horseback riding? Um, dancing, mm -hmm. gymnastics. Gymnastics. And you also? Tennis. Okay, you also play tennis. All right, so uh, you started learning English not when you were little? Yeah. Um, but you don't learn English in school, or do you? I learn English at school. Okay, but as a foreign language? Yeah. What is your primary language in school? French. Okay. Alors, on va parler français. D'accord. Alors, je sais que français est... Ma... Meilleur... Meilleur... <laughs> J'adore le français, c'était ma deuxième langue. Alors, quand je suis venue à l'école française, je ne savais pas français. Alors, j'avais une copine qui s'appelait Afet, qui m'avait pris quand j'avais pleuré. Et elle m'a pris pour jouer, on avait joué avec des marionnettes. On a joué avec un, un poupée, il, elle avait des choses, elle m'avait parlé des choses rigolotes. Mm -hmm. On a, elle était ma première copine. Et ma deuxième copine, c'était Swat. Alors, quand elle, elle était, on avait, on était, on était en train de jouer ensemble avec Afet et Swat. On avait joué des jeux avec des ballons. Mm -hmm. Parfois, quand, on jouait, il avait des garçons, venait, on avait joué aussi avec les garçons. Mm -hmm. Alors c'était trop bien quand j'étais en petite section. Mm -hmm. Mais déjà en CE2, on, on, a, on avait marre, on n'a on a pas le droit de jouer. Pas. Quand on a fini d'écrire notre devoir, on a le droit de jouer 5 minutes. Après, on commence les maths mm -hmm. ou parfois on commence l'art. Ça, je aime l'art. Oui. Mais maths, tu n'aimes pas Non, j'aime pas. Et grand-mère aussi. Et grand-mère n'aime pas maths aussi non? Oui. 
grand-mère. Mmh. Ah, d'accord, grand-mère. Je, je pensais oui. que tu as dit grand-mère. Ah, grand-mère. Oui. D'accord. Euh, alors, bütün dillerden en çok sen sevdiğin dil hansıdır? Azerbaycan ve Fransız. Okay. Bəs, ən yaxşı bildiyin dil hansıdır? Fransız ve Rus. Başka hansı dili örgənirsən? İspan. İspan. Bəs, hansı dilleri örgənmək istəyərdin? Növbəti. Yapon. Aha. Sonra. Çin. Çin. Və... İspan, ə, Alman dilini istəyirsən? Yox. Yox, yox, yox. Sonra istəyirəm örgənmək. İtalyan dilini istəyirsən? Yaxşı. Neçə dildə danışmaq istəyirsən? 11. 11. İnşallah danışarsan. Gəlin, mənə gəlin, siz tibə doğru. Rəsqəcə, yəməş qəd tibə. Qoq tibə ilət? 5. Qədə tə jəviş? Hazırə bəycəni. Qədə tə vəy lütçə dəruq? Zəki ifəvhat. Və qəqə şkələ tə uçuşcə? Fransız qəlit. Xərəşə. Sən əndi mənə deyə bilərsən, sən ən xoşladığın dostun hansıdır? Zəki. Onu hamdan çox istəyirsən? Sən bacı ilə yayda neyinə mən xoş deyirsən? Üzmə qumlan oynamağa. Və qumlan oynamağa. Və sonra, məsələn, siz... Bəs axşamlar sən neyinirsən bacı ilə? Mən sizi hara parıram? Restoran. Restorandan sonra mara gedirik? Evə yatmaq. Yatandan əvvəl mən sənlə neyinirəm? Kitab oxuyam. Düzdür, mən balam. Can you say something in English too? Tell me what is your favorite color? It's white and blue light. Light blue, okay. Tell me what are your favorite things to eat? What do you like to eat? I like watermelon, pizza and pork. Okay, but apart from watermelon, what other foods do you like? All the fruit. All the fruits? Okay. But what is your, so your favorite one is watermelon, but what else do you love? What do you eat before going to bed, when you're hungry? I eat banana. Banana, okay. Can you please tell me, what are some of your favorite animals? Spitz. Spitz is what? A dog. Do you like also horses? Yes. Do you like horseback riding like Baji does, like sister does? Yeah. Can you please tell me what are some things you learned with Mariam? You learned about hair. Hair. Okay, so my hair is my hair what? What is my hair? Is it straight or wavy? Straight. And is your hair? Straight. What about sister's hair? Straight. What color is your hair? Brown, light. Light brown. And what color are your eyes? Brown. Um, and who is the tallest in the family? Daddy. And uh, who is the shortest? Me. Yeah. Who is the youngest in a family? Youngest. Who is the youngest one? It's me. And who is the oldest one? Daddy. Okay. Um, all right. So, on va parler un petit peu français alors, d'accord? Oui, oui, oui, oui. Tu aimes le français? Tu parles un petit peu français on va, et après on va jouer, d'accord? Tu me dis quelque chose en français Quel âge as-tu Tu me dis ça en français. Cinq. Tu as cinq ans. Alors, tu peux parler. Qu Est-ce que, est que tu as un petit frère, frère ou tu as une sœur Sœur. Quel âge a ta sœur C'est combien Huit. Huit. Comment elle s'appelle Sévinc. Ok. Qu'est-ce que tu fais à l'école À l'école, je mange. Tu manges seulement, tu manges et après Et après, moi, je dors. Je, tu dors, tu manges. Est-ce que tu joues avec tes amis Oui. Qui est ton meilleur ami Zaki. Et qu'est-ce que tu fais avec maîtresse Gulnara Tu m'as dit on va aller, on va aller, d'accord C'est tout. Tu me dis un petit peu de ta famille. Non, on ne peut pas parler avec en russe. On a parlé déjà en russe. Jamil, tu peux me dire quelque chose autre en français. Tu peux me dire qu'est-ce que tu aimes faire à l'école Je vais faire jouer avec Zaki. Alors, on va finir, on va partir, d'accord tu, tu peux me dire quelque chose en français, un poème en français, d'accord 
Tu m'as dit un poème en français. Quoi? Un poème en français. Les oreilles. Et ça? La bouche. Et ça? Le nez. Et ça? Les yeux. Et ça? Les doigts. Et ça? Ça, c'est le doigt. Et ça, c'est? La main. La main. Ça? Je ne sais pas. Ok, ça? Je ne sais pas. Le pied. <rire> ok. Et ça? Ça. Ce sont les? Comment on dit en français? Tu sais comment on se dit en, en, en anglais? Oui. Comment on dit en anglais? Ça, ce sont? Teeth. Teeth. Ok, bien. Alors, tu peux parler une autre langue qui est... Regarde, tu peux me dire que, comment ça s'appelle ça en russe? Zoub. Et en azeri? Dishlar. Dishlar. Ok. Sen en dishlar, sen ne çeyit dişin mi var bilirsen? Sayar. Red, iki, üç, dört, beş, altı, yedi, dokuz, on, on iki. Senin çok uzun çok uzun dişlerin var. Senin dişlerin ne renktedir? Ah. Ah. Temizdir dişlerin. Sen dişlerini yaxşı yiyorsan akşamlar. Günde neçə dəfə dişler yiyorsan? Evvel səhər yiyorsan sonra? Sonra akşam. Akşam. Özün yiyorsan yoxsa mama sənə yiyor? Özün. Özün her şey isə. Bəs çimməyə kim çimir? Özün. Her şey özün edirsən sən? Сегодня бы я углансан. А теперь давай поговорим немножко на русском. Хорошо? Да. Скажи, вот если ты сможешь каждый день кушать это одно, что это будет? Что бы ты хотел кушать каждый день? Хочу конфеты. Конфеты. А еще что хочешь каждый день есть? Хочу арбуз. Арбуз. Я уже услышала. Теперь ты мне скажи, вот ты разговариваешь, ты сколько тебе лет? Пять. А ты на скольких языках разговариваешь? На русском, угу. на азербайджанском, на английском и на французском. Молодец, спасибо тебе большое. Пока. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. And please do let me know down in the comment section below what are some other video topic suggestions that you have for me. I love reading your suggestions and I'll be more than happy to shoot new videos for you. Thank you and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.